drop the fear of missing out. You can still very much enjoy Christmas and time of your family and still at least maintain the position that you're in right now. So hi, my name's Andy Naylor. Um, welcome back to the show, Alphas. Um, super happy to have you here. I am founder and CEO of Naylor Body Design, host of your Optimal Alpha podcast. Very, very happy and excited to have you back. And we are, when this podcast comes out, approximately three, four something days away from Christmas Day. So I hope you're feeling festive. Um, today, we're going to dive into, I guess, really a, a bit of how to survive Christmas, right? There's definitely... Different people see this in a different way. Some people just really don't care, and that's absolutely fine, and go through Christmas not batting an eyelid. But some people get very anxious. They get very concerned. They actually get very worried about what's going to happen over Christmas and how they deal with things. And some people are definitely on either side of that. So we're going to delve into that. I've just sort of laid out, I guess, I think eight sort of tips. It, there's no reason that it was eight. They were just the eight that came to my mind, I guess, of survival tactics, Um that could just help if you begin to maybe stack some of these things together, you'll see how they will put you in a position where you'll be able to actually enjoy Christmas and indulge and still get to the other side and know that you've not completely messed things up. So first of all, number one, plan ahead, <laughs> plan ahead. Now we're only a few days out from Christmas. So I would start doing this now. Like, so take wherever you're listening to this podcast and start doing what, everything now. So increase movement. Simply maybe add an extra 10 to 20% of steps per day in the, in the few days now leading up to Christmas. And maybe, in fact, the whole way through the Christmas week. Just bump your steps up. In other words, your movement by 10 to 20%. It's not a lot, but it will help on so many levels. So, for example, if you're, say, doing 8,000 steps, maybe you now do 9,500 to 10,000 steps. It's an extra 20 minutes, if, if, if that, if that, depending on how long your legs are and how quickly you walk, just bump your steps up. It's really easy. What you could also do is if you do go out and do steps, maybe add a backpack. Just add more weight to yourself. Make the, if you don't have any more time, then take a backpack, shove some like a big five liter bottle or a gallon bottle of water in the back and do your same amount of steps. But now you're moving more weight through space. It will take up more energy. You'll just create a little bit more calorie expenditure. Right? While talking about calories in also planning ahead, drop your calories by maybe 10 to 20 percent. So let's say, for example, you eat two, two and a half, let's say two and a half thousand calories a day. Drop them down by 10 to 20 percent. Create a calorie credit. Create a calorie credit. So you go into Christmas Day with a with a, a wallet full of calories that you've not used that you can spend on Christmas Day and not give a shit about it. Happy days, right? Like, but it's easy. All you've just done is increase expenditure a little bit, decrease the incoming calories. You've suddenly maybe given yourself maybe 2,000 calories that you would have ate anyway, that you can now eat on Christmas Day and not even like give a crap about it. Now, granted, you could smash those 2,000 calories in a second. So you'd still need to think smart of how you spend those calories on the day, but it would at least make sense to do that. Alphas, I interrupt this show with a simple message. This show is here to benefit you and your progression to the best version of yourself. But not only just you, it's also here to benefit the people around you, your loved ones, your friends, other alphas in your vicinity. So why not do a really cool thing today? Something that I would thank you for and maybe someone else would. Share this podcast with at least one other alpha out there who you know would benefit from it. Why not share the information, share the ability for someone else to grow? I'm sure they would thank you. I 100% would absolutely thank you. This podcast only grows by our listeners, our followers doing amazing things like giving us five-star reviews, downloading podcasts, subscribing, and then of course, sharing it with other people. I thank you from the bottom of my heart, share it with one person, and of course, drop us a five-star review, download the podcast, and you know, of course, subscribe. And now back to the show. Number two, increase water intake on the day. Why? So, well, it's just going to fill you up a little bit. If you're conscious of drinking water, a couple of things are going to happen. If you do drink alcohol, which is absolutely fine, 
absolutely no issue. I will drink red wine on Christmas Day, more than likely. I love red wine, and no one's going to tell me that I can't drink red wine on a, on a day of celebration. I'm going to. But a couple of things will happen, and I'll come, I'll come back to this in a second, but we probably make worse food choices after a, a few glasses of wine, but we're also getting dehydrated. And people tend to stop drinking water when they're drinking another beverage of some sort. So consciously increase your water intake. It will help keep you hydrated. It will help keep you maybe you know less drunk ultimately and it's gonna it's gonna kind of keep your mind on something else rather than maybe snacking which is number three don't snack now christmas i know and if my mom listens to this she'll laugh if i go back to my mom's and i'm sure you're probably all the same if you go back to parents or if you, if you are the parents and you've got children coming to you i bet you put the snacks out right so there's probably going to be a spread of lovely food that's going to be on the table that you're going to sit around and all eat together, but there's going to be snacks beforehand. So over, over in, in the UK, we would call them crisps. In the, in the US, you guys call them chips, but you all know what I'm talking about. It's stuff that you mindlessly stick your hand in and shove down your face. And it will normally be, it's normally going to be either crisp or chips or nuts. So quite highly caloric and really not filling and really salty and moorish. So you, any calorie credit that you've created, you'll, you'll smash through it just by shoving your hand in, in the snack bowl. Don't try, try not to snack. That's not the best food you're going to eat on the day. The best food is when you're going to sit around a table with your family and eat lovely, actual, real, wholesome food. So save yourself for that. These snacks will account for a massive increase in calories for literally no reason at all. Eat the proper food on the table. Okay, number four. Now you're eating food at the table, chew it well, chew it well. There's going to be a lot of food and I personally fall foul to this quite a lot. I have poor digestion uh, and I'm supposed to help my poor digestion by making sure that I chew my food excessively. Uh, I do not ever leave myself enough time to eat and I eat fast and then I finish the meal and then I think to myself, damn, I didn't chew that well. And the stress that that puts on my and anybody else's digestive system is real. So you're going to probably overeat on a holiday day, like a Christmas day. So you need to mindfully think to yourself, right, okay, well, I need to take the pressure off my digestive system so I don't end up feeling like a digestive sack of crap the next day. Chew your food. Like try and chew your food down to the smallest little particles you possibly can because all you're doing is one, enjoying the taste of the food because you don't taste it in your stomach, you only taste it in your mouth. So enjoy the taste, savour it. You maybe have, maybe you've earned it, maybe you haven't, who knows, but chew it, it will help your digestion. Number five, okay, go steady with the alcohol. Boo, everybody says. So everybody goes, not everybody, some people go into these sort of festive, oh, I'm going to be really careful with alcohol this year. And whether that does or doesn't happen is is a completely different story but ultimately generally speaking alcohol is just a massive humongous whack of zero nutrient calories um and then we tend to make pretty poor food choices after drinking and we're getting dehydrated so just go steady um limit maybe limit yourself a, a, a tip here is let's say you're drinking wine Try to avoid top-ups before you finish a glass. If you top up a drink before you finish the drink, you then completely lose track of how many drinks you've had. And let's say you're not driving and someone else is driving or you're staying somewhere so you can ultimately drink as much as you like. But if someone's constantly topping up your glass and you don't ever finish the glass, you've completely lost touch with how much you've drunk. So if you go into a day saying, I'm going to allow myself over the whole day four glasses of wine, right? Absolutely cool. Nothing wrong with that. But... When, when have you had four glasses of wine? If someone's just topping it up whenever, whenever you get to like 25% full, you will have lost completely. And eventually you're going to sit there and go, oh, fuck it. Like, I'll just, I'll just drink then. Um, it's a drinking day today. I've, I've, just, I've decided now it's going to be a drinking day and I won't drink tomorrow. But it didn't have to be that way. You could have just thought carefully about what you were doing. And then remember, drink water between the drinks. Six. Maybe you've now sat down, you've had a lovely meal, it's been great, you've had dessert, you're feeling full and happy. Get up and go and have a walk. Try to not just go and sit down somewhere and be sedentary. Get up and go for a walk post-eating. It will get you up off the sofa. It will get out as well. It gets some fresh air. It will, it will help clear your head. Um, it will help digestion. Get up and go for a walk. 
we're not talking about the calories you might burn off. Like it's irrelevant at this point to be told, unless you're unless you're going for, for a, unless you're someone who goes out and has a genuinely long Christmas Day walk. Fine, okay, but most people probably don't do that or have the time to do that. It's just get up, get some fresh air, move around a little bit. Like you know, allow your body to digest food. Speaking of digestion, something that I know that I use on a day when I'm having big food will be something a good digestive enzyme. So. What do a lot of people get when it comes to something like Christmas or a big meal? They tend to get heartburn. Yeah, fair enough, like a little bit of acid reflux. And they think that's because it's too much acid. Probably not. Probably not. Why would there be too much acid? Personally, I suffer with heartburn and it's through lack of acid production. Okay, so I don't take an antacid. I take something that produces or promotes stomach acid. So I take something called betaine HCL. In fact, I take that before every meal. So just before every meal, about 20 minutes before, I take a couple of the capsules that I have, and it will upregulate stomach acid production so I digest my food better. And ever since I've done this, I don't get any acid reflux. This might not work for you if you genuinely have too much acid, but the chances are, if you're listening to this and you're in your 40s and upwards, what makes you think you're producing more acid? Do you, do, do, does it make any sense? Or is it, does it kind of seem more logical that your stomach acid production would probably start to lower as you age? It seems to be more logical to me. Although, who knows? But taking a good uh, digestive enzyme like beta HDL could definitely help. Eight, last one, probably no need for seconds. There's probably going to be food left over. And going up for seconds um, and just finishing off the food doesn't necessarily need to happen. Um, you're not going to run out of food. Uh, so you don't have to stuff yourself. You know, it's fine to want to make sure the food is eaten. But much of the food that we eat on a Christmas day could certainly be used the day after. There's nothing wrong with doing that. In fact, some amazing meals can be made with the food on the day after, um, you know, Christmas. You know, bubble and squeak is the first thing that comes to my mind, which may mean absolutely nothing to some people listening to this. I'll let you go and look up bubble and squeak. I'm assuming... I, I kind of assume it's a very British thing, but I might be entirely wrong by that. I, just, I, I genuinely don't know. Anyway, that's going to round us up for today, uh, my alphas. So I hope that that's given you a little bit of insight. There, there are a bunch of things that I'll do. So we'll leave things there. Thank you so much for uh, listening to this episode. As always, I hope it's been useful. If it has, please subscribe. Um, subscribe to the, uh, to, the, to the podcast. Maybe download the episode. Give us a five-star review. I'll give you a shout out. But from now until next time, over and out.